Hey world, uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these uh, tech streams. I'm hoping to start streaming every day. I wanted to stream earlier today, but it took me a while to get ready. Going to be developing my own, you know, democratic platform pretty soon. But before I get into my own democratic platform, um, I wanted to talk about basically all the things that I've learned are going on out there in the world and there's a heck of a lot i mean i'm just at the tip of the iceberg from what i've seen it's it's kind of overwhelming just the amount of stuff that's going on in the world today but uh the one thing that gives me hope for the future is is basically just innovation in the democratic technological space like tools that help people work together tools that help people um, basically become more competent caretakers of this planet. So um, it's been a month, I guess, since the last time I talked about cool tech that I l learned about. And so basically there's a lot to cover there's so much to cover that i i, I can't even cover all of it I've, I've learned so much in such a short period of time but i guess there's a few key things that i wanted to bring up before i dove straight into working on my own platform again and those are i got some notes that i prepared so i'm gonna bring them up here we go okay so Yeah, so I guess uh, one of my big discoveries in the last month is how huge the whole civic technology space is. And um, I heard briefly like about virtual Taiwan, and uh, we're in Taiwan there. They have developed a, basically an infrastructure for citizens to more directly participate in their democracy by you know, pr making proposals and discussing them and voting on them. And uh, then I learned that uh, that there's pretty advanced open source tools that are have been de deployed in Madrid and Barcelona and other places. And uh, that's all pretty impressive. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, this talk isn't really prepared. I just, I just, I just threw some notes together by slapdash grabbing all the tabs that I had uh, not entirely closed yet, and just yeah. So I just wanted to cover it so that the world knows that, like, as I'm developing my platform, I'm I'm aware of these other things that are going on, and I think these are cool technologies that people should know about. I guess like first. First on the list, I guess, is the the Consul project. It's a open source, free open source. Uh, it's a platform developed for the city council of Madrid to help basically to help their constituents get involved in the political deliberation process. And rather than me giving an overview, I'll, I'm going to show like a they have some nice short videos that are published under a CC by license, oh, which reminds me, I should bring up my CC by license. Do I even have that here? Hold on a second. Do some stream setup. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring that up in a second. I wanted to, uh, that was the wrong thing. Copy. Yeah, there. There. Oh, that's the wrong logo. Anyways, uh, it's basically these are buy share like videos. So that means this video itself has to be a buy share like video by the virtue of me watching it on this stream. Um, but yeah, I'll just put that in the comments when I post it on YouTube. Anyways, let's get to this video that introduces console. Oh no, don't tell me I closed. 
Here we go. Um, yeah, I'm getting used to this whole stream setup stuff. Ooh. We'll screen this. Oh, I gotta make sure this is not muted. Okay, here we go. Here's console. Console. Can you imagine an open city in which citizens help shape the environment in which they want to live? Being able to participate in the decisions that affect our lives is not only necessary, but also very effective. It is proven that in places where citizens participate in decision making, everyday problems are solved more efficiently. The free and open source console software developed by the City of Madrid is a powerful tool for citizen participation, allowing the inhabitants of the municipalities and regions to participate directly in public decision making. It is an initiative of collaboration between cities, a network of shared knowledge that continues to grow, having already been successfully added to dozens of municipalities, not only in Spain, but throughout the world. Nosotros lanzamos este programa de Buenos Aires Elige. Estamos particularmente orgullosos porque en un mes, en la etapa de presentación de propuestas, ideas y proyectos, 25.000 personas dejaron sus ideas. The citizens put forward their proposals, and those that receive sufficient support pass to the voting stage, so that all can decide whether it should go ahead. Llevar una propuesta ciudadana a la realidad es muy sencilla. Es que el gobierno se sienta vinculado con esa decisión y que la lleve a cabo. ¿Cómo la lleva a cabo? Pues en la Junta de Gobierno se decide llevar a pleno las medidas que sean oportunas y votar a favor en el pleno. Better parks, more green spaces, meeting places for young people, citizens wish to create a better surrounding. Hence, all the proposals are logical, sustainable and social. Con un nuevo campo de rugby podríamos ampliar el número de jugadores y jugadoras. Queremos un espacio en distrito centro para pequeños, bebés y grandes. Y la creación de un parque con una mega estructura de juego para que sea el punto de reunión de todos los niños del distrito. The tool can be translated into different languages, can easily be configured and adapted in terms of its image and style. Once the government backs console, only two things are needed, a server based on Unix and a programmer. We will help you with everything else. Un gobierno nos dice que quiere utilizar Consul. Les invitamos a un sistema de chat muy moderno, muy bonito, que se llama Slack. Y allí hablamos con estas 100 personas que están usando Consul. Les vamos resolviendo dudas, nos piden funcionalidades. Transparency, efficiency and collaboration are the words that best describe Consul. Because with everybody's help, we can build better cities. Yeah, that's a nice short intro, and there's a second follow-up video I wanted to show where, um, gotta get, um, gotta get quicker at switching views here, um, uh, where they discuss, they talk about their, uh, user interface a little more, bring that up. In the debate section, in the debate section, any citizen can start a debate on the subject that is of interest to them and can vote on debates initiated by other people. The debates which receive the most votes go on to appear on the main page on a regular basis, so it is the citizens who decide daily which themes are most important in their city. In addition, the section has a search engine that can filter, in this case by keywords, dates, trends or author. Once the search has been carried out and a debate has been chosen, clicking on it allows access to the text within it and one can see the comments generated. Since it is intended that each of them has the maximum possible reach, they can also be shared in social networks. Citizens can provide their opinion, read the arguments for and against or show their approval or dislike with the like and do not like buttons in the right margin of the page. Also, the comments can be voted on, selecting those which are most interesting. To start a debate, you must log in, click on Start a Debate, which is located in the menu on the right, and fill in all the required fields. Those in charge of the institutions have verified profiles so that they are able to intervene in the discussions in a recognizable way. 
those in charge can then enter to answer them directly. In this way, we create a space where citizens and institutional leaders can speak directly without any kind of barrier. That's interesting. So, and apparently Consul is being used, in, well, it started in Madrid and it's currently being used in, uh, I think, like a hundred municipalities worldwide. I'd, I'd love to see this used in my own municipality. Um, it seems like kind of basic content management system style technology, but actually being used with a purpose to improve local citizen participation. So, and this is like something that, uh, oh yeah, that, uh, yeah, well, I'm trying, I, I want to develop my own platform for doing this kind of thing, except mine will be a little bit more general purpose. Uh, like, they're, the actual like discussions that happen on this platform seem, they're, they're just like kind of basic threaded discussions and but what's what's really interesting is 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 basically just the tools to engage so so people can propose and take feedback and um and and, and apparently this has been used for years and it has successfully like tens of thousands of people within madrid have engaged in this platform um and actually gotten proposal and actually <laughs> gotten their proposals to legislation. So it, it's pretty impressive. Um, and it, it, a kind of a cousin of console is another platform called Decidum, which was created in Barcelona. And Bar Decidum is a lot like console from what I can tell, except Decidum has the, was made, was kind of designed to try to be a little bit more modular than console is. Uh, I, I've read uh, articles that say that console is a more like monolithic platform, it, but it's like kind of a turnkey solution. You plug it in, it just works. It's being used by lots of people and it's, and it's good to go. Whereas Decidim, it's like there's a whole bunch of little modular pieces and you can use it to fit your own needs and it might not necessarily be simply used for a municipality. You might want to use it for other purposes. Uh, I'm going to, let's watch these videos on Decidium. This item, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but um, maybe the video will enlighten me. I got way too many windows juggling here. We spend our day on social networks, seeking approval from others, or reinforcing our ideas about how badly the world works. What if, instead of complaining, we could connect with different opinions, discuss common concerns, and reach binding agreements to make real changes in our lives? This is Decidim, a political network, a platform for democratic participation, easy to use for any group of people from the smallest to the largest. If, for example, you're a city council that has to manage a public budget, Decidim helps you. Citizens can use Decidim to provide different proposals on where to spend money, evaluate their viability, and vote for them. In addition, it allows you to track in real time how the selected projects are carried out. If on the other hand, you're a group of people who want to self-organize as an NGO, a cooperative, association, or collective, Decidim also helps you. It makes it easy for you to get in touch, share information, schedule meetings, and manage assemblies to achieve your common goal. The platform adapts to your needs. Decidim changes and improves. It grows with contributions from the community through its free open source code. It's a political network to make decisions in a free and secure manner. It respects people's privacy. Decidim is a techno-political tool to build the democracy of the future. Because democracy never felt so real. 
pretty cool stuff. Now, there's one more video. Might as well just bring it up when I got the window open. Decidim is a free, open source software for participatory democracy in cities and organizations. Decidim allows you to propose measures, start debates, and make collective decisions. As soon as you sign up, you can post your proposal, check out the ideas posted by others, discuss them with the community, and vote. Decidim also helps you create and organize groups and meetings to support and implement proposals. Once your proposal has been approved, you can assess the outcome and monitor its implementation. Decidim can also be used to allocate public funding and to monitor expenditure. The CIDIM makes it easy to organize and manage participatory processes and assemblies, submit citizens' initiatives, and search for information. And a code of democratic safeguards guarantees that the platform will remain open source, transparent, traceable, and open to collaborative improvement. The CIDIM is also a community that holds regular face-to-face -face meetings to develop the platform and its applications and studies and promotes new standards for networked democracy. The CIDIM is a free software tool. It is developed collaboratively and it is already in use in many cities. Any municipality or democratic organization can use it and adapt it to its needs. Join the CIDIM. Propose, participate, decide. Yeah, the, these tools they give me a lot of hope. I, I, I for, actually, I've I've been waiting for years. Like, I wish these tools existed twenty years ago when the internet was just getting was just initially growing. Uh, it, it kind of it, it's always kind of been a disappointment to me that there hasn't been more of an effort on the part of governments, municipalities, political parties, or e unions or democratic organizations of any sort to actually like create a online democratic platform tools to help constituents participate better in all levels of governing and uh but it's it's cool that in the last uh five years it's really starting to take off um in, in, this, in spain especially and also in taiwan um and they i think there's and, and also there's there's things called like civic tech groups you should look up and see if your city has a civic tech group they're they're popping up in cities all over the world where people are getting together and just working on tools to help run their uh, run their municipality better um yeah and i guess uh and, and i'm i'm no expert on these tools i'm i'm just learning about them myself for the first time like i've 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 often like thought about these tools but i'm only like now getting like uh <laughs> really discovering the breadth of what's out there um yeah i guess i another technology i wanted to bring up was polis i suppose yeah it it arrived it was it was developed in response to Occupy Wall Street and the Arab Spring as a tool for uh, just helping people doing better polling and helping people to reach consensus over various topics. And they kind of developed an AI slash visualization system to help like cluster people's opinions and in, into different groups and to see whether the uh and i guess like yeah uh, uh, there's a there's something called v taiwan virtual taiwan which is like a public digital information space in taiwan where, which is uh, uh i think initially founded in 2014 uh, as, a, as a, an initiative to basically democratize to, 
we get a technological de de democratic infrastructure for Taiwan. And they use Polis as one of the tools to make sure that uh, constituents were being properly represented by their representatives. And yeah, I, I, if you're at all interested in these things, I'd, I'd recommend uh, just yeah, going on Google, YouTube, try, just there's many great lectures uh, of the developers of these tools talking about their philosophy behind them. And it's not just the technology itself, it's, it's the philosophy behind the tech that's really important. So anyway, I just wanted to, I got a lot more to cover, so I just, I just wanted to uh, briefly introduce these, these tools that are actively being worked on. Um, so in my first few videos, I discussed, which you can see, I'm, I guess, on my YouTube now, uh, like the, the platform that I want to build, which is kind of a, basically a system to Im improve online discussions. And I, I specifically want to improve online discussions uh, you, for the sake of improving democratic processes. So, and so one of the other uh, things I've been researching is like what kind of what kind of work has been going on like, basically we, we, we've been stuck with like threaded comments and and broad chat for the past 20 years with very very little innovation like reddit's been around since 2006 and then dig before that and then slash dot before that and they all used variations on on the, basically the same threaded comment system and recently there's been some research into uh, improving uh, discussions on these on these kinds of sites and w one of the best videos I've seen actually is uh, recently is there's a there's a talk by Amy Zhang at uh, I think she gave it at Microsoft Research and she discussed her PhD work and other work that's basically all focused around on improving online discussions. And she introduced several tools that I didn't know about. And like, I'm just gonna briefly like talk about them here, but I highly recommend watching this video if you're interested in the subject matter because she covers it really well. And, and of course, uh, way, way more eloquent about all of this than I could ever be. But um, yeah, so some of the standout, I think one of the, her, her, her focus of her research was uh, uh, implemented in a tool called weakum.org and I guess the kind of the idea was uh, I, I think that the, the standout idea was like basically recursive summarization of of of, of discussion threads uh, like she introduced how she talked about how Quora the website where people can like post questions and get answers uh, they introduced like a, a wiki summary at the top of their uh, of their page so there was kind of like a which attempted to summarize like the answers in the thread but there was like often little correlation between what was in the wiki summary and what's in the discussion and so she, she um so she just and, and and her collaborators developed a uh a tool for basically a recursive summarization where you can go into each like sub part where, where somebody will summarize this part of the thread and somebody will sub su summarize that part of the thread and then and then it can collapse into a universal summary of the whole thread and it's it, it's it seemed quite interesting and uh, yeah and she says like right now what, what that happens is like there's a initial there's a discussion and you have this widely unruly thread and then you go through after the fact the discussion stops and then people make summaries and there, apparently she's currently working on a tool where the the summaries can happen in real time and there's like a feedback between the discussions and the summaries and that sounds interesting that actually sounds kind of similar in concept to what, what i want to try to build so uh going to be following that work closely it's really interesting and she she talks about use cases actually she talked about um the madrid uh she didn't mention console specifically but i'm assuming that was a tool because like uh she one of the other cases she mentioned was on the, uh, the the madrid city council using it to uh summarize the discussions that are taking place on their platform so so it's so it's kind of neat some so it was, yeah.
So these systems to improve online discussions directly affect the tools that engage that affect uh, citizen engagement in in democracy. Uh, so so some other tools she introduced uh, tilde chat and this is like a tool for like marking up chat. So like imagine like say like a Discord style chat where it's just like all kind of flat and like in, in Discord like, you can like tag things and stuff. But uh, like it, the tilde chat uses basically specific t tags to to cluster comments together that are that are related to each other and tags to like link questions to answers and and then so similarly to the way they could summarize threads discussion threads it's a, it's a tool designed to basically summarize discussions so say you ha you hadn't been on your discord server for a week you can get a nice summary of everything that happened um other important yeah, other things she brought up is an annotations, and th this is another big thing I want to have in my tool. Uh, and, and I've se I've seen a lot of there's a lot of uh, annotation software being developed right now. I, I discussed some in my previous video. Um, the one she brought up as mbmit.edu, that which is a tool that actually students use with the, like professors and students will use it in, in a course environment where like a the teacher will present a paper and then. The students can go through and annotate how they feel about or and what they're thinking or what they're confused about and like like in the margins of the screen of the paper and and then the teacher can go through after look at the annotations and see what students are struggling with what they're understanding and what they're not understanding and like yeah so this is very brief she she goes into much better depth and i recommend checking out her discussion of this um and yeah, she also introduced eyebrows, which is kind of like a similar annotation tool, but for actual websites. So you get a browser add-on, you put it in your browser, and then you, everybody who has this browser add-on can use it to mark up websites and then share their annotations. I, I talked actually about a simil similar tool uh, in my previous called Hypothesis, and then there's there's several others. So that's an interesting space to follow. And yeah, annotation is definitely something I want to include in my tool. Um, and then she closed out with um, uh, just tools, w w one tool for helping managing, managing your inbox, uh, just directing messages into different folders and stuff. and just algorithms to help keep your email organized. And the uh, final one was a uh, strategy for combating online harassment, which is basically where people like group up and they have people who are, who are trying to avoid getting harassing messages, basically just, it's like a moderation system where, because it's, 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 it's much easier to read hate mail that's directed at somebody else than it is to read hate mail that's directed at yourself. So people can, and this is like a tool for people to squad together Whereas like you, you can filter somebody else's hate mail and somebody else filters your hate mail and then hopefully you don't have to see that stuff. Uh, and uh, it is all early days and and it's just being tested and, and there's there's a lot of questions that remain unanswered and a lot of testing that needs to be done. But uh, I, it's encouraging to see this kind of development happen. Um, yeah, I guess I guess another lecture so so moving on from that another lecture i found interesting that i saw recently um i mainly found it interesting because of the source it's from the uh the some so, someone who works for the bbc technology department and just trying to so it, it shows to me like the because i'm actually very very discouraged about the state of journalism today and i think a lot of people are so it's it's somewhat encouraging to see that there is uh, an attempt to improve how they deliver news, and some concepts that that David Caswell brought up in his lecture are issues that I brought up myself in terms of um, uh, where he, he I, I I guess the, the the thing that I liked most about the talk was when he talked about news. Like news as it is right now, it's like you have an article and then it's and then it's 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 lost. It's like like yesterday's newspaper gets thrown in the trash. Uh, yesterday's comments on a Reddit thread will never get read ag read again. Um, even even like a, an article on the news site will, will 
seldom ever get read again after its immediate relevancy. So, but the, the idea is to create more structured content that gives people better uh, context for stories and, and such so, that so, so, so the, the uh, the article about a story can grow over time and be collectively refined and cumulative and like you can see kind of see a little bit of this on 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 wiki news wiki news kind of attempts to this like uh collective refinement of a news article and but it's it's somewhat encouraging for me to see uh a mainstream organization at least talking about moving that direction even if they haven't already um yeah and I guess, I guess the other thing he kind of like talks about and I encourage you to see his talk because he talks about him better than I can is 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 yeah event extraction or just like basically the ability to I guess I would go into like mar marking up articles such that uh well it's basically like what's the structure of information like how how can you Ooh. Oh, oh, <laughs> thanks, Gypsy, Gapsy. Yeah, yeah. I, I find it really interesting too. It's it's hard to articulate, but it's uh, cause there's just like so many concepts. Um, but yeah, and it's, but but the idea is like if if we can have uh, just try to think about. How, how to represent information beyond like a static article that just disappears like and, and just to actually have like some kind of structures that just gets that gets built over time and and such that's like if a different article talks if we have multiple articles talking about the same event if those articles could be linked together around the event and um yeah and, and so you could diff more better navigate between the events so uh, I, I yeah so I guess that 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 got me through my notes that I I wanted to talk about, and I had like a million tabs open still that I kind of wanted to get through. I don't know if I basically got a half hour left to stream, so maybe maybe for the rest of the stream I'm just gonna say it's gonna be like uh, I'll just like I want to clean out my tabs so I can close my close <laughs> close my windows and not open them again. Um, so what, what else would be worth talking about that I didn't make notes for? I get, I'll just I'll just make some links that are I'll post some links that are that I think are useful. So one is participate DB. This has like a it's like a little wiki with a lot of I don't know is it a wiki? Uh, it's or at least it's just like a list of uh, many collaborative projects that are out there. So you can check out a whole lot of tools that are being developed to and there's a lot of them. <laughs> Uh, there's an enormous amount of just tools that, and, and like it's just it, it's just like a brief little entry on on all these different tools that are being used to improve democracy in one way or another. Um, what else do we got? Oh, Participedia. It's another similar effort to document. This one's more of a wiki, I guess. And th this one seems to have news articles about uh, various like movements going on around the world. Although their last update is from November. Uh, hopefully they get back. Oh no, there we go, June 26. Yeah, so they're still updating right on. So I guess they just, uh, and some things that they thought were important back in November. And uh, what else? 
Oh. And when I talked about the um, forum from Madrid, um, and I talked about this is a philosophy behind it. There's here's a website where they talk about their ethical digital standards and, and policy toolkit. So this is like more meta, basically just like ethics and uh, around developing political platforms. Um, So there's a lot of a lot in there to go through. Um, oh yeah, here's a um, article comparing forum and decidum. From the, one of the developers of the uh, of the Decidum, um, just comparing and contrasting the strengths and weaknesses of of the two platforms, uh, I found it really interesting to read. Yeah. And if you're interested in the stuff I also recommend like you can check out like my Twitter link below and just see the people that I follow because like I'm on this account the only people that I follow are people that I think are doing really relevant stuff in the democratic technology space so there's a lot of cool links there uh, oh and I, I guess that's that's it so for now there's other things that were that have been lost bookmarks I made but I'll I'll get I'll save them for another talk so I guess just for the next few minutes, I, I want to basically, I'll just talk for a little bit about how the platform that I want to develop like fits into this space. I kind of talked about it before. Um, hopefully tomorrow I'll be working on, actually, yeah, that's something I wanted to do is on, on, on my platform, I wanted to talk about basically the challenges that I face. Um, so I'm, I, I, I called my platform basically an intersectional conflict resolution. All right, yeah, I can't even remember what I called my own platform. Uh, I kind of came up with a name for it on my last stream. intersectional conflict collaborative conflict resolution platform <laughs> so and the idea here you gotta learn that word um basically i like i was really like uh like yeah, amy zang was i talked about her lecture where she was basically wanting to improve online discussions by doing recursive summarization and I kind of oh cool man thanks yeah, it's always cool to see people getting interested in this stuff yeah I, I, I think it's uh, uh, there's just an enormous amount of potential like like the, uh, the, 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 the way discussion is happening online right now is just so polarized and it almost seems like the tools are designed to get to create conflicts and get people angry at each other. So I thought, what if we developed a tool that was like specifically designed to like resolve conflicts rather than create conflicts? Um, and so I came up with a, just like a few rough ideas. 
And so one, one idea that I haven't seen, like I haven't seen Amy Zhang talk about, it, I haven't seen uh, like introduced in forum or in any of these democratic platforms. And, and, and that's like this, basically this, this intersectional idea. And the intersectional idea is that um, it's basically some kind of uh, allow people Oh no, sorry you got, uh, that was the auto moderator. Uh, I gotta, I gotta turn that off. I, I'm sorry, I'm new to Twitch and I, I you, you shouldn't have gotten your message deleted there. I'm new to Twitch and, and I, I just, I just put all my moderation tools on maximum, not really thinking just, cause just trying to prevent like people from saying bad words and stuff like that. But I didn't realize I'm going to turn that off. <laughs> Or you can maybe can break it up into sentences, I guess. But uh, I have to go to the, my settings and, and turn that off later, because, yeah. Um. But yeah, I guess the, the idea on the conflict resolution platform is to allow people to arbitrarily form different groups around issues. And... So like I talked about previously, like like on, on on Wikipedia, there's like a neutral point of view for every article. And and the goal of Wikipedia is to to, to create a neutral point of view. And I, I'd like to see a wiki that instead of having a neutral point of view, it, it tried to best re represent every point of view, such that every kind of different group that has like a stake in whatever topic gets a chance to express their view the best that they can. And and then I want to develop tools and, and 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 then have it such that when when you have groups that have very different ideas about uh, a topic, to have a system in place where they can like piece by piece like resolve whatever differences they have about the topic. So the idea is to like you know, br br break down disagreements into the smallest possible units and, and go from there. And yeah, I guess I, 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 I if you're interested in, in my platform, I, uh, I talked about it at length on, uh, you can check out my YouTube. I talked about it at length in my first two videos, especially my second video. I, I go into a lot of depth and I'm hoping that in like, yeah, I want, I want to actually start developing it. I keep saying this, but Tomorrow, next stream, I'll be developing it. But I have like, uh, there's many challenges that I want to face. That like, basically, I'm not the world's best developer. And I guess I should finish this sentence. Arbitrarily to form groups around issues, and then. I don't want to say necessarily come to consensus, but eventually over time, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I guess I guess it's this, this this whole like group dynamic that I haven't really seen yet out out in the wild, and so that's what I'm going to focus on on my platform. And I kind of want it to be general purpose. Like I don't necessarily want it to be for a specific like a city council or even for a specific group. I just want or, or for a democratic group that's trying to manage like like the way Decidum does. I think Decidum is already doing a great job doing that. Uh, I, I, I see this more as like a as a uh, alternative for Reddit, 
as like a place where people can go and discuss things in a more um, destructive manner. <laughs> um, but yeah. And... But because I have like very limited uh, software development skills, I mean, I'm not super limited. I have a computer science degree and I have some experience developing websites and different, using different platforms. And I have a, a fair amount of Python experience. So I'm going to try to use, uh, I'm going to try to use Django, but I know, so yeah. So I guess I, I kind of want to switch into development mode. Like this was like a talking stream and I kind of talked about what I want to talk about and how I just kind of want to talk. Uh, I have to like go soon to do some work at f in, in like 20 minutes. And and like I wanted my tomorrow stream to be all about the development. But before I do the development, I kind of want to list it all, all the challenges that I can foresee that are going to take place in the development. And so maybe I'll just kind of get started on that a little early. So challenges. Challenges. So, our challenges that I am facing is, as far as I'm aware, there is no. Basically, a higher hierarchical. object-based permission So like, um, like in my platform, I want people to be able to basically form groups arbitrarily. And I also want to be groups to be able to form meta groups, groups of groups, and I want meta groups to be able to form meta groups of meta groups. And I also want groups to be able to divide into subgroups. And such that like and, and I also want it to be such that each group has its basically its own moderation system and such that the group can only allow certain people to participate or sorry it's, it's it, and it's only certain people who will have moderation roles and stuff like this and i think that's going to make a basically a really really hairy authentication slash permission system that and i have there and like i know in django and other python platforms there's like object-based permission and that and i might be able to work with that but uh i don't know how to like say somebody in a super group um makes a makes a like it was just like how yeah how how do you make sure that somebody who joins a subgroup has permissions within the parent groups and and how somebody in the parent group has permissions within the child groups i i i haven't really seen a solution to that and so i think i might have to develop my own so that's 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 one challenge that i know i'm going to be facing um What's another? Ch um, yeah, I, I, I also want. I want to. More solvable problem is I, I want to have an annotation system. Inline. Okay. Um, now, as I mentioned before, there seems to be several annotation systems out there that have been developed, so um, it seems to be a solve, solvable problem, as it's been solved by many people already, so hopefully I can borrow some, some work, too, because I, I definitely want, uh, yeah, like, like my, 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 my platform, too, is like, um, I, 
Ooh, I don't know how to talk about a little piece of it without talking about all of it and then going on several tangents. But in a nutshell, um, I want... Uh, every basically every 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 kind of post will be like a a, com a complex object in which there will be a wiki uh a discussion thread and each but then like think each post in the discussion thread is also uh, the same object of the object itself and so basically i, I want this uh I, basically a recursive object structure that includes <laughs> Uh, like wiki editing, wiki, um, uh, Threaded comments. Um, in content tagging. So I want to like the ability to basically inside a, a wiki or inside a, a comment to be able to basically to tag things like events, tag claims, tag citations. Um, And so I think I'm, I'm going to have to create my own like object structure for this. And I imagine I'm going to have to use like an object database. And then and that this creates indexing problems. And basically, I, I, I <laughs> yeah, it, this is going to be a, a real challenge in a number of ways. I'm going to start like basically, I guess so, yeah, yeah, yeah development roadmap, development roadmap. So I'm gonna start simple. I gotta start small. Um, so first thing I want to do is just just to create like uh, simple wiki editing with revision history. So that'll be goal number one. There's already I know there's like a giant go wiki already, but it's and uh, I'm not sure if I want to use it because it's like a bit complicated and comes with a lot of baggage. So I, I want to keep it as simple as possible, but at the same time, it would be nice to reuse it. So I'm going to investigate using it. But as, but I think on my next stream and probably my next few streams, I'm just going to be developing a simple wiki. Um, and then from there, I want to develop the markup system, annotation system. And then uh, then discussion threads. And then then the crazy group. And I think that's going to be like the most difficult part about this development. So, yeah. So that's in a nutshell. And yeah, so tomorrow I'm, I'm hopefully going to be streaming um I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna gonna shoot for like like one PM Eastern Standard Time and hopefully stream for four hours and just do some live development of this platform and go from there. <laughs> 
I, I guess that's all I, I, I have to talk about today. I don't know if, if you had any questions or anything I before I head out. But uh, thanks for thanks for watching and, and participating in chat. Uh, yeah, I yeah I I don't really have a schedule yet, but I I do want to try to stream every day. I'm also I I also play StarCraft, so if you come at night, I'll be playing StarCraft. But if you come in the day, I'll be working on this this stuff. Uh, so hopefully at w one p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow is my goal, four hour stream, and then I'd like to continue to doing that at least six days a week, like uh, m Monday through Saturday. But everything's kind of in flux right now. But that that that's my goal is to get on that that treadmill and we'll see how it goes and yeah um thanks a lot for joining dude and yeah hopefully we'll get some some more people joining us in the future too and uh, i am i'm thinking right now this this development's going to be really slow at first because i I'm, I'm really learning a lot of these technologies again for the first time i don't have a lot of experience with python web development i in the past most of my web development was in php and java Oh, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that that's cool. I don't know, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and I like once a week. I'd like to do a like a, a talking stream like this, where I just like talk about all the stuff that I learned that other people are doing. But like mostly, it's just going to be development. So it might be kind of dull to, to to watch me trying to figure out how to learn Django and stuff like that. But that's that's that that's the plan, and hopefully, you know, as the weeks and months go by, eventually a platform will come together and maybe it'll turn into something that people will find useful at some point. That's the hope. But yeah. So yeah, I guess I'm, I'm going to end the stream here uh, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. And thanks for, thanks for joining. Peace. Will that not post?